Hello and welcome back for another cooking video. Today this is an extra special one because I'm cooking here in Quick Smoke's Kitchen. Hello. Everybody say hello to Mikey. He has kindly invited us into his home and we are going to cook a meal together. What are we making? Pot roast and uh, mashed potatoes. Mashed potatoes special. Mashed special. Potatoes. Very special. But we're not telling Papa Quick Smoke. So. No. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to get turned around here and we're going to show you how to start the roast. Today we ran out of time because we've been outside seeing. We went to the Ben and Jerry's place. Very nice, lovely ice cream. Some of my favorite. And we've run out of time, so, and we didn't get the pot roast started in our slow cooker, so we're actually going to be using an electric pressure cooker. But this recipe works just as well in either the oven or in a pressure or a slow cooker. So I've already salted and peppered the roast and put a little bit of flour and I have a tablespoon of olive oil heating up in here and we need a fork. All right, so I've already salted, peppered and floured our beef roast and I'm just gonna put this in here to start browning and this is what I like about the best about using the pressure cooker because I can do all the browning in here as well instead of getting my stove dirty too. It just all goes in here and it'll probably take a couple minutes. So when you say browning, you're meaning like you're treating this like it's a frying pan almost. Absolutely. Instead of the pressure cooker that it is. Right. Okay. And it doesn't become a pressure cooker until we put the the liquid in and the lid on okay and then it starts and you can hear it already starting to uh, fry up in there a little bit all right so it's been 10 minutes roughly yeah yeah that we've uh, been brown the meat up probably about five six minutes on each side so at this point we are going to add in two celery sticks that i've just cut in half and I'm gonna jump in a quart or four cups of honey beef stock, but you can use store bought, it works just as well. I just happen to have some beef stock on hand. So there we go. And I think I'm gonna add in just a touch of garlic. Probably, oh, I don't know, two, three cloves that we've minced up. Well, it's pre-minced, so we'll just dump that in. And I'm going to put the lid on. And we're going to let this cook in the pressure cooker for 65 minutes. And then once that's done, I'll bring you guys back and we will add in our vegetables and then let the, the roast cook for another 15 after that. So, all right, guys, I will see you then. In the meantime, I'm going to get some potatoes peeled up, and we're going to get those boiling on the stove. All right, it's been, 50, no, 65 minutes Love since that. we uh, started it. And what I'm going to do now is we're going to add the... Uh, vegetables into it but I'm going to remove the care of the celery I don't know why I want to keep calling them uh, carrots, carrots. Uh, these have given all the flavor that they're gonna ever give so what I'm gonna do is remove them I just wanted them in there to help flavor the broth ouch don't burn yourself yeah do you need more beef broth or anything no nope. Yep, we have plenty and at this point all we're going to do is drop in our vegetables <laughs> now if you were doing this in a pressure cooker you would have added your vegetables and stuff already in here if this is for you that's about four celery cut into three pieces and one whole onion cut into wedges and you can just drop that in anyway 
and as many carrots as you guys want. Uh, well, are you a big carrot fan? I'm not, but Eric is. Okay, so. I'm a moderate fan, and he is meh either way. So, so I'll maybe half a bag? Yeah, that works. Alright, and I'm just going to put the lid back on, and we're going to cook this for another 15 minutes under pressure, and then it will be dinner time. Oops, there we go. And let me go ahead, and while we are doing this, I'm going to get the rest of the potatoes right, So done. we're going to go ahead and mash up our potatoes. I've got about a pound of mashed pot or potatoes here that I've already boiled. And I'm going to add in four ounces of cream cheese that I've let come to room temperature. And I'm also going to add in some goat cheese that is flavored with garlic and herb. And we're just going to put that right in if you've never had goat cheese. It kind of reminds me of a, like a sour cream tang, but it's really good. Mikey has never had it before. And I told him I was going to bring some up, and he said if I made something with goat cheese in it, he would try it. So, this is his goat cheese debut. <laughs> well, hopefully it doesn't taste like goats. It does not. I'm just going to simply mash this in. Now, I brought two of them, just in case this wasn't enough. That's always been my fear when it comes to dairy product stuff, is uh -huh. that... When you get it and you taste it, it has that very animal mm -hmm. farm taste to it. And it's, I like creamy. Right. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. And it, it's kind of like with venison. It's very gamey and if you're not used to it, it can be a little off-putting. Mm -hmm. But I don't find goat cheese gamey. I, just, I find it tangy. I like sour cream. And I thought with the uh, garlic and herb added into this, it would help um, go down better. Right. This is how I'm going to say it. You know. uh, I watched a video the other day that actually had Gordon Ramsay in it, and he was cooking with camel milk. Oh, wow. I've heard of that. I've never tried it, though. All right, I think that is probably... I like my mashed potatoes a little bit lumpy. That way people know that they are homemade. I know that's not the fashion in the, you know, in the restaurants, but. Rustic style. Absolutely. All right, so I'm actually going to add in some Most sour me. cream. Uh, this has just already got sour cream, or cream cheese and uh, potato on it where I tried it out make sure that they were soft enough and I'm just going to put in use the sour cream as if it was my milk to help make these creamy and again you really want to be careful when you're mashing mashed potatoes that you don't over mix them because they'll become gummy and I think that's actually pretty much right where I want them Look creamy enough for you? Oh, definitely. Okay. Looks delicious. Now, one more thing. I have some actual plain goat cheese crumbles that I'm going to add in. Want to try one? It tastes like cottage cheese without the juice. Kind of, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. It's not bad. Uh -uh. And I'm just going to put these in. And now these aren't going to really melt in, but they're just going to add a nice little uh, flavor burst as you're eating the potatoes. And you're not going to really be able to tell that they're there. Because we're trying to hide them from Papa Quit Smoke. Yeah. Well, he's going to cover it all in gravy anyway. Yep. So. It's, it, it's going to be a catch-22 because if he really likes it, He's going to want me to make it. <laughs> and I'm going to be like, I don't know how. <laughs> well, I did check out your local grocery store, and they do have 
So if you just bought plain and added a little bit of garlic and herb, like garlic while you're boiling it, your potatoes, mm -hmm. and a little bit of chive or parsley. And with this part, it would probably make the exact same thing as what I bought already done. Okay. And whoops, I'm going to add just a little bit of black pepper to these. And then we're going to set these on the stove with a lid on until our roast is finished so that they right, stay so warm. It's time to make some gravy to go over our mashed potatoes and the roast. Mike has already melted four tablespoons of butter, unsalted butter. And we're going to add in four tablespoons of flour. Just plop it in there? Just plop it right in there. All right. And now you just want to keep stirring it to slowly cook out the raw flour tank. And the broth we're going to be using is the broth that the meat's been cooking in and the veggies and it's, you know, it was already flavored from when I canned it, but now it's going to have even more because we've added more beef into it. We've added those vegetables into it, a little bit of garlic. Mm-mm. It smells delicious too. Did you know that the longer you cook your roux, the less it thickens? I know that. Mm -hmm. How do you like your gravy? Do you like your gravy thick? Do you like it a little runny? I kind of like... <laughs> so I like you are saying runny, right? Yeah, he likes runny. I kind of like it a little bit thick, but I don't like gel. Right, know? yeah. And I find, that's why I prefer a rebase, because I find with cornstarch, you get that gel taste. You know, it mm -hmm. feels like it's, that's why I tend not to use that. So I'm going to start with two cups of our uh, beef drippings from the pressure cooker. Kind of like in between. I like it a little runny, mm -hmm. but enough to know it's there. Right. Well, and the longer you cook it, um, it'll start thickening up. So some people like to put it on and let it simmer for half an hour or 15 minutes to half an hour. Another, I normally I'm like in a rush trying to get gravy done at the last minute. Cause, right, it's always you know, the last thing you do. It's gonna be, um, it's been cooking. So the gravy I'm used to, it comes from a package. <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you, you boil the hot water, you add the package, mix it in, and it's done. Yeah, I used to do that until I learned how to make a roux, and then I learned how good homemade gravy is. And that was about the time I started really getting into, I mean, I've always cooked homemade, but I took shortcuts, like packet gravy or never jarred. No, no, that's, that's, that's pretty yeah, bad. Yeah. But, um, you know, I would take that little bit of a shortcut until I found out exactly how simple it is to just whip up gravy from, you know. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely a little different for me because I'm used to that really, really brown mm -hmm. from the package. Well, I can make it that brown because I noticed you have the... The gravy. Right. And that'll... It won't add any other flavor to it, but it'll give it that brown, that dark brown. Would you like a little? Sure. Okay. Why not? I mean, we're getting crazy here. I mean, we have having special mashed potatoes yeah. and... <laughs> This is called Gravy Master. It's also called uh, Kitchen Bouquet, which if you watched my Nuka-Cola video, you would know that's what I used to make the Nuka-Cola syrup. Oh, God. <laughs> there we go. There you go. See, that's that nice brown beef gravy color. Do I have to keep stirring? Or? Uh, yeah, you should because it'll start burning. But now at this point, you want to start adding your seasonings in. Right. I, yep. I don't know. I mean, shit. Does that look good? Or do you want more? Whatever you guys are, because you, you see me cook. I put a lot of pepper in. Well, we, uh, in this house, like I've said in a million times in my videos, kind of season to taste. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And now I do not pan with salt. So there, the only salt that is in there is from what I added to the outside of the roast. All right, so I might as well throw some in there. Yeah, just you don't want to go over because remember you can't take it out after you put it in. Right. <laughs> okay. Just a little touch of salt, guys. Yeah, a little, little touch. touch. I'm used to kosher salt where I just pinch it in and I kind of eyeball it. Nope. I mean, it's, I find it not quite as salty as iodized table salt. 
Yeah, well, that's, that's what we're used to. Right. We we're trying to switch to the kosher salt and the sea salt because we know it's better for you, healthier. Oh, definitely. But uh, it's already healthy when you use it in the crap. Right. All right, if that's the thickness you like it, I think we're done. If not, we can add a little bit more broth because I still have some extra. What do you think? Slacker? It's pretty thin. All right. All right. So you, you want to let it simmer some more? And... We can. Do I keep stirring it while it does it? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those things you got to baby. It's like making pudding. All right, so this has got the slacker approval, so... All right, well, I think we're done, so we're going to get it plated up for you guys, and we're going to eat it. All right, guys, while I'm getting the gravy on the plate, I'd like to remind you all of the Gamers and Geeks playlist that JPK Death and I have going on in our channels. It is a community-driven playlist. If you would like to be a part of that, all you have to do is go out and make a cooking video, just like Quick Smoke did, and then post it to your channel, and let us know about it, either in his Discord server or on the comment section of our latest cooking videos and we will go out, go and uh, check that out and uh, get it added to the playlist so here is the whoop there we go this is what it's going to look like once it's all plated up it smells absolutely amazing i thank mikey very very much for allowing me into his home and into his kitchen to cook with him for today thank you thanks for coming Oh, blast. it's been so much fun. I've had a lot of fun being up here with you. But, uh, yeah, I think we're going to go and eat dinner while it's still warm. Remember to check out the Gamers and Geeks playlist, as well as my Fallout Cookbook and Elder Scrolls Cookbook playlist. I will leave links down in the description to both of those. If you would like to know how I made the spoon rolls, let me know down in the comment section below, and I will make a cooking video on them as well. But for now, thanks so very much for joining me. I've been Ball Girl. I hope you guys have enjoyed, and I hope I see you in the next one.